This week, NVIDIA showed off their RTX architecture gaming alongside an ARM processor. Valve dished out some corrected info on the specs for their Steam Deck that could potentially enable beast mode for the handheld, and unfortunately, right when we all thought things were trending in the right direction for GPU prices, that now seems unlikely. Responsibly take your antidepressant, and let's hit that power button. It's time to cold boot. Welcome back, it's Poe back again with Let's Get Techy. On the first partition of this week's cold boot, we're covering the ARM takeover. Okay, so maybe ARM isn't taking over yet, but it's certainly been in the news a lot lately. Between Apple's M1 chip, Microsoft tailoring Windows 11 for the architecture, and Nvidia's attempt to buy it, it's definitely poised to play a much larger part in computing than I ever expected. And speaking of Nvidia's attempt to purchase ARM, this week they showed off some gameplay of Wolfenstein Youngblood running on an RTX 3060. What was different about this demo was the CPU being used to provide the draw calls to the 3060. It was a MediaTek MT8195 built on the ARM architecture and usually found in Chromebooks. Now forgive my ignorance on the MediaTek products, but in general, I honestly thought they were only used to power some of the budget Android smartphones and tablets, but apparently they actually have some products that are good enough to power Chromebooks. And I suppose now, thanks to Nvidia, also play AAA video games. This is exciting news because ARM products are known for their power efficiency. If you weren't aware, just take a look at what the Apple M1 chip is capable of for a 15 watt power budget. Also, just about every, if not all, smartphones are powered with ARM chips, and we all see how powerful those pocket PCs have gotten over the last 10 years. Can you imagine a world where you can play Red Dead 2 on a Chromebook? If not, you better strap yourself in because if the Nvidia acquisition of ARM makes it to the finish line, we may very well see this in the near future. Honestly, even if that deal flops, it very well could still happen, it just might take a little longer to pan out. This should also be welcome news for any Apple users that like to play video games because if game studios are willing to build their games to run on ARM, there's a very good likelihood those same games would also come to Mac now that Apple is ditching Intel and transitioning to their own in-house ARM-based silicon. It honestly makes me a little sad to think of a world without traditional x86 processors like what we're used to from Intel and AMD, but I think we're far enough away from an ARM takeover that both AMD and Intel will be able to pivot and move with the times. Let us know your thoughts down in the comments on ARM potentially powering your gaming PC in the future. On the second partition of today's episode, we have a quick update to last week's video that covered Valve's new handheld, the Steam Deck. If you haven't seen last week's video, I highly suggest you check it out after this one. In a nutshell, Valve is bringing to market a Linux-based Nintendo Switch competitor of sorts, but it'll run PC games using a translation layer known as Proton. The Steam Deck packs an AMD APU similar to the Xbox Series X and S, as well as the PlayStation 5. Initial reports as well as Valve's own product page for the Steam Deck stated it was packing dual-channel LPDDR5 RAM running at 5500 megatransfers per second. The page has now been corrected and we now know it will actually make use of 32-bit quad-channel RAM running at the same speed. Anyone who's familiar with AMD's Zen architecture will undoubtedly know how much it loves memory bandwidth, and going from a dual-channel configuration to quad-channel could make a massive difference to performance. I mentioned in last week's video that the Steam Deck should be able to handle just about any PC game you throw at it, and this reinforces that statement. The downside is that you probably won't be able to get your hands on one of these handhelds and get to enjoy all of this newfound power until sometime in 2022 due to unprecedented demand fighting with supply. That said, I think the Steam Deck will be the first of many products of this type. With as popular as this device will be, I think we'll see not only companies making similar devices, but also Valve making updated versions of it in the future. Coming full circle with our first story this week, I could absolutely see a future generation of the Steam Deck running on ARM architecture, and who knows, maybe even an AMD APU using ARM architecture. Let us know down in the comments if you think AMD will move in that direction, and before you brush off that possibility, just know that Intel already has something similar in the works. I saved the worst for last in hopes that your antidepressants that I warned you to take at the beginning of the episode had time to kick in. We got word a couple weeks ago that it seemed as though the GPU market was finally beginning to stabilize and hopefully we would start to see GPUs back at reasonable prices. Well that's ended up in the ditch like a Mustang at a car meet this week. YouTube creator Moore's Law is Dead has gone on the record as saying we aren't likely to see GPUs at normal pricing through the end of this year. 
He made quite a few good points, and while it's not what anyone wants to hear, it's better to just pull the band-aid off and get it over with. For starters, inflation in general is at play. Not only GPUs and silicon are up in price right now, but if you look around at the store, quite a bit of products are up in price. Unfortunately, this includes not only GPU dies, but also the components that make up video cards in general. Substrate, power delivery components, and especially memory. The memory that holds your frame buffer while you're playing Call of Duty has basically doubled in price since the current generation of cards were released. Well, at least the higher-end GDDR6X has. Do you think AMD and NVIDIA are going to keep their original MSRPs knowing that the components they use to build your shiny new graphics card are now more expensive? No, they won't. Especially now that they've seen, even at ridiculous prices, cards are flying off the shelf faster than they can be put on the shelf. In addition to higher component prices, us gamers just can't ever be satisfied with what we have, so there are still millions of people looking to buy a new GPU. Economics isn't my strong suit, but I've already mentioned inflation, and now we're talking about supply and demand. Maybe I should change the name of the channel to Let's Get Financially Responsible? Unfortunately, Moore's Law is Dead stated that he fully expects demand to far outstrip supply through the end of this year. And with PC gamers making it abundantly clear that most of them are willing to pay ridiculous prices for video cards, don't expect NVIDIA or AMD to lower prices on any of them. Another good yet sad point that was made is with winter coming, there's a likelihood we could see a large resurgence of the virus. In some areas, it's already begun, and we saw what happened to gaming last year during the pandemic. Since everyone was stuck inside, there was a massive growth in the industry. Diehard gamers became even more diehard, people who casually played games before lockdown turned into diehards, and even non-gamers picked up a controller or keyboard for the first time. Let's all hope that last one doesn't pan out. At the end of the day, we can all sit back and complain about not being able to buy a video card at a reasonable price, but let's be honest, that's first world problems to the max. Instead of complaining about not being able to buy a $1200 RTX 3080 Ti, let's all just try to survive until this time next year. My views are already so low that if any of you die, my metrics will be in the toilet. Unfortunately, that's going to do it for this week's episode. If you enjoyed it, please be financially responsible with the like button. Consider subscribing if you aren't already. Don't forget to hit the bell icon so you're notified when our next video goes live. And stay safe out there. We appreciate you watching, and we will see you in the next one.